welcome to this webinar. We're talking about data-driven transformation and how we helped um, CRH transform their uh, P2P process uh, together with uh, BPMD. So today um, we will have two speakers, uh, which will be Lafras Molman. He's responsible for process improvement at CRH, has been at CRH for, uh, for quite a while and in this role for a little bit over a year. And Rakesh Hussain, who is the director at BPMD, was uh, responsible for this, uh, for this project from the BPMD side. Um, just some uh, remarks before we start. Uh, everybody will be on mute during this uh, webinar and uh, we will be monitoring the questions box in the control box of the uh, GoToMeeting platform. Uh, and we'll make sure that every uh, question will be answered uh, during this call. So with that, I'd like to hand over to Rakesh for the first part of the presentation. Rakesh? Thank you, Olaf. I decided to break one of your rules and unmuted myself. But hello, everyone. Welcome to the session today. <clears throat> We're gonna to talk about uh, process mining. I'm Rakesh Kusai, a director with BPMD, uh, based out of Kingston, UK. Uh, I've been doing process management for the last 15 years and uh, have, have been involved right from process design, discovery, implementation, uh, but recently found my, <clears throat> my most exciting part of BPM, which is process mining, and that's what we're gonna talk about. <clears throat> and we're gonna talk about this using the CRH story, now, the CRH uh, story is one of my most favorite projects uh, for three primary reasons. One, we got real good feedback from senior leadership. So this story that you will see today, we have presented it to uh, various uh, senior level uh, uh, members at, at CRH, uh, CEOs, FDs, and, and others, and have got real good feedback. Uh, the second reason this was an exciting story was because of our project sponsor, that's Lafras, who is a co-presenter today. Uh, but what what we what what we got with Lafras on this project is very clear expectation setting right at the start, both from the consultants uh, that is us, and also with the leadership team, which actually helped us a lot. And then the third most exciting bit was the overall team that we worked with, which is the CRH uh, team. Uh, and and Lafras is going to talk about the, the composition of the team and the role they play. So that's uh, broadly what we are going to cover today. Uh, Lafras is going to talk about the CRH story, uh, how that's different again versus traditional process improvement initiatives. Uh, BPMD's uh, approach to process improvement using Signavio process mining tool, which we call rapid process improvement. Then we'll focus on the outcomes and benefits of this project and also delve into a bit more detail on how process mining can complement RPA uh, journeys as well. And then we talk about what's next at CRH. So that's the agenda for today. Most of the talking will be rightly done by Lafras, who was very engaged on this project. But let me quickly talk about BPMD and Signavio, and then I'll hand it over to Lafras. So moving on to the next slide. So that's uh, so we are BPMD, Business Process Management Discipline. I, I think the name says it all. We focus, we are a niche consulting firm that focuses on business process management and uh, it was founded by uh, Peter Franz and Matthias Kachma who are thought leaders in this space. Uh, we've been uh, in business for around six years uh, and uh, our focus primarily is to help our clients uh, and, and develop capability in-house. So we, we don't typically come with a school bus. We ensure we train our clients in the journey and make them independent on whatever areas that we work with them. And I'm sure Lafras will uh, validate this in the session. Uh, so that's briefly about BPMD. What we focus on are four things. As I said, our primary focus is around business process management and everything to do around it. So that it, we see that uh, being consumed in four different ways in the market. The first one is your traditional BPM, which is managing your repository, uh, and uh, managing your process as an asset. Uh, the second one where we see a lot of demand right now is understanding your customer journey and its impact on your operational processes. 
uh, we are going to st uh, speak about the third one, which is around driving improvements and operations excellence. And we're going to talk about one specific approach and tool that we use for that. Uh, and the other interesting area that we also focus on is what we call smart automation. Uh, but it's about how do you maximize automation potential uh, using business process management. So that's briefly about us. You can find a bit more on our website or reach out to us and we, we'd be happy to share the details of each of these offerings and how we can help you. But today is mostly about how we used the Signavio tool suite uh, to, to do process mining. Uh, so here's a quick overview of the Signavio tool suite. Uh, so Signavio, as compared to other process mining vendors, uh, uh, the, the key strength with Signavio is its overall suite that provides you with all the features and functionality that you need around business process management, right from design, discovery, improvement, analysis, and implementation. And this is done through four key modules that Signavio provides. So the first one is called Process Manager. Uh, now, this is where you store and maintain your process repository so all your process related information inside and the key differentiation that process manager brings in is the collaboration feature and we'll see a bit of that today uh, but happy to discuss that and delve into that if, if you see the need in your organization uh, uh, so process manager is where you store all the information around your process the hub is where your organization consumes information around process for their day-to-day -day business or for execution or improvement. One of the cool features with Signavio is what Signavio calls PI, which is process mining, uh, is the process mining tool that Signavio provides. The PI stands for process intelligence, uh, and you'll see a lot of what process intelligence can do today, so I'm not going to discuss that in detail. Uh, what we won't be covering today in much depth is the workflow accelerator. Again, one of the tools, uh, one of the modules with Signavio, which basically helps you execute your processes. But today, as I said, is all about PI and how we did this at CRH. So I'll hand it over to Lafras, who will take us through the story at CRH. Lafras. Thank you very much, Rakesh and Olaf. Um, so, CRH. Uh, who are we? We are. We always jokingly refer to ourselves as one of the biggest companies, that, or the biggest company in Ireland that nobody knows about. Uh, but we're definitely one of the leading global diversified material operations in the world. Uh, we have a, a footprint of about five in over five continents. In Europe, we're present in 23 countries. Um, and as you can see here, that we've been involved in some of the larger projects in the world. Uh, for instance, the Grand Prairie, and we also will be involved now in the HS2 project in uh, the UK. Um, why did we do process mining at CRH? Um, one of the things that CRH has very famous for is that we are a very federated company, so we're not very centrally controlled. And about a year and a half ago, we started looking at transactional finance improvements. We did a big benchmarking exercise and we identified that there's some obviously some opportunities for us uh, to go into. Uh, the question after one year was have we been able to harvest all these long, low having fruits, the things that we've identified during the benchmarking exercise? And, and the outcome was after some consideration is that no, we have not. And for us to go into that next step, we really need to invest in our processes and understand those better and try and drive some alignment. Um, we have quite a lot of manual processes. Because we're such a federated company, we have a huge number of different ERP systems, um, and we've identified during the benchmarking exercise that there are quite some inefficiencies around this uh, by just looking at the number of people involved in these um, exercises. Uh, about three years ago, we also started um, an RPA project in some of our opcos that originally or initially started very well and was very well perceived and it was quite a, a big jump but then slowly it started to peter out a little bit and we saw also that process mining could be an opportunity for us to identify these opportunities to help us to uh, do further automation 
And I think the most important thing that came out for me, at least during this uh, conversation, was it creates a huge amount of transparency, especially for us. Um, we were able to have a conversation uh, with CEOs and uh, were other senior managers in the in the company where we did the uh, proof of value, where we took away kind of a lot of the emotions. And I think that's a very important part. And this was for me a very useful tool because these were things that were clearly there. Um, we, were ident we were able to identify these process variances in, in quite some detail and there were some surprises that came out of it. And a very important part is that we had very clearly actionable develop deliverables. That was very important for us in the beginning of the process, that we were not just gonna go through another exercise, come up with some ideas, and we would not be able to translate these into workable steps. And, and I think this helped us as well. Um, and we will get uh, later on in the, process, in the presentation a little bit to some of these conversations. So how did we select this tool? We, we looked at quite a, a few vendors. Um, of course, BPMD and Signavio being one of them. Uh, we looked at some of the information that's out there in the market today. We looked at uh, one of the important reference points, Gartner, of course. Um, and we invited a couple of people to do some presentations for us. Um, we looked at what they were able to do for us. And uh, we had quite a few number of, of reference calls. I'm trying to understand uh, which, would, which software or which tool would suit us best. Um, quite an interesting thing that came out in all of the calls uh, that we've had is that everybody that implemented some kind of tool said we should have started sooner. So that was quite an interesting thing for me. Um, and w once you've done this and you come to the end of it, you'll understand why um, everybody's saying this. Um, after this uh, consideration then of the, the several vendors, we came up with the conclusion that we will actually like to use Signavio. Now, if you go look at what is currently in the market, there are not huge, massive differences between the different tools. But we specifically chose Scenario because it allowed us, being such a federated company, to be able to compare amongst ourselves without having a standard and allowing us to work towards a standard. And I think this ease of, of sharing the information in the hub makes it uh, very, very useful that people can you know, see, you bring the transparency and everybody can understand how to do it. So, um, then we started the so, proof of value. Lafras, if I can interrupt for one second, uh, th th there's one okay. question about, can, can you elaborate a little bit about who were involved in taking this decision to embark on this mining project as a whole, and maybe even the choice for the vendors uh, at the end as well? Yeah, very good question, Olaf. Um, I think one of the, the, the key successors, six factors for any of this type of projects is that you must have, uh, very senior support on this. So our European FD was very supportive around this. Um, as we are structured in Europe in four uh, clusters, we invited one of the cluster FDs uh, to be on the panel of the review. We had a representative from IT because I think it's also very important to make sure that you have them on board from the beginning, that they don't see this as a, as a threat, but as a more of a cooperation between everybody. Um, we also had people from procurement on there, and we had uh, somebody from one of the other divisions that we that we also have in Europe, um, as CRH is structured in three divisions. So we had two of the divisions representative. Um, so quite senior people uh, involved, um, and I think that was part of the success that once this was um, reviewed by everybody and we came to a conclusion, uh, there was very much commitment to support the, the rollout of this. And that's how we ended up then deciding uh, to do in one of our larger companies in Europe a proof of value. Great, thanks. Does that answer the question? Great. Yes, um, so, so senior leadership. Absolutely. I think it's very important. Um, now, in CRH currently, we have a, a methodology where we and we do it for all of the, the digital journeys that we are having. We look at the discovery, we do some evaluation, we do an implementation, and then we start uh, running that part of it. So we try to take um, the tool and together with our RPA vendor, which is UiPath, try and, and see how this tool can help us in all these different areas. 
Um, and I think the, the way that the tool is structured um, helps it very nicely to, to help us to understand by first doing some process mining, by help us to analyze the uh, as is process and identify the opportunities for automation. Um, you can even simulate the 2B processes and we will talk about that a little bit later. Um, and then you do the implementation thereof. Um, now, one of the outcomes of this is obviously that not everything is automatable, but it also shows you that there is opportunities maybe for training um, and just making people aware a little bit of what actually the process should be because sometimes the knowledge gets lost um, as we go along in the journey. Um, Liam, if we can just move on to the next. So what is the difference? I think a lot of you may have been involved in when we lock everybody in a room, we give everybody post-it notes and some brown paper and we start drawing processes on the, on the wall. And that's not necessarily a bad pro process. Um, it's just with what we have with this tool, it, it helps us to go into quite some detail and it helps to show the full picture of, of what you have there. And I think that is very, very important. I mean, we all have these wonderfully designed processes and, and then you see people are using it differently. People are skipping some of the things and maybe it is because the process is very old or designed for a, a different environment, or maybe people are, are skipping some important control. So it's important to, under, uh, to understand why this is behaving or why it's happening in a certain way. And as you see here on the left, um, we talk about the carrot and stick approach. Um, carrot obviously being the ideal process that everybody should follow and we would like everybody to follow. But then also what the process mining bringing is bringing a little bit of a stick because it helps us to identify where some people are not performing in the way we would like them to. And we can give them some targets because of if one part of the business are able to do it in a certain way and achieve a, a certain effectiveness, why is there then a difference in the other areas? And I think it makes it's part of this transparency that brings um, that that it helps us to to understand better. And on the next slide, you can see some of the questions that we were actually asking ourselves and what we will be able to to answer uh, in a very clear and concise way. You know, how long does processes take? Where are the bottlenecks? Um, and this was quite interesting because during our analysis, the appeared bottlenecks where people didn't expect to be bottlenecks. So definitely. A lot of the information that came out was not brand new to the to the OPCO because they are quite uh, well advanced in their process and understand why it does it work, how does it work, but they didn't expect some of the issues. Um, so I think that was a, a very good um, outcome of the whole process. Um, you could see where people adhere to some of these these things and you know kind of the normal things that you expected um, to get out of a process mining was coming out. Uh, so how did we go around the whole process? So the, we were following the, the rapid process improvement methodology uh, from BPMD. And if you can, if you see here, there is a, it's a seven step process where you define certain things and you, you take the data that you've received from the tool uh, and you marry that with having conversations with people. And I think that's part of the success of this whole process is that you take the data that you get, but you still go down and have a conversation with the people. So if we, we just go through the, the seven steps quickly. So the target value, we, we defined certain KPIs that we wanted to look at. And because it was a proof of value, um, we defined what do we want to see. Um, and I think if, if you go ahead, of course, uh, in, in implement the tool, this kind of what you would like to see, or what you want to measure yourself against with will change over time. But it's very important to define these target values and, and understand these KPIs that you want to measure because there's such a wealth of information out there that you may easily get lost if you don't very much focus on, on what you want to get out of it. And that was very important for us. And once you've identified this, what you want to get out of it, you need to go and collect this information. We decided to use uh, one year's P2P information to uh, do the analysis on. Um, and we define based on those KPIs, the certain events, uh, you know, the, the information that you need to pull out of the, the system, we were using SAP, um, to be able to structure this and put the information in a, in a more understandable way. Uh, then you go and have a look at the ASIS processes. Now, as this company has, as is a SOX tier one company, 
obviously the process maps uh, was already in existence so we could upload it into the system but this is also where you could define them, the process maps if you don't have them interestingly although a tier one company and they are quite uh, proactive in, in making sure that the models were updated we found a few places where actually the the process documentation was not reflecting the reality and then you get to the next step where you do the as is process analysis and then here it's very important that you have a conversation with the people so we went to the the, the business teams and had a very detailed conversation with them about the outcome because we have to make sure that sometimes there may be a reason for this data uh, and you have to marry these two and make sure that there is an alignment before you come up with something because there may be a very specific reason why you saw a certain outlier um, and that reason may not exist anymore so it's important to have this conversation and I think that was one of the successes of, of our conversation that we were able to get this information and the engagement of, of the people was, was quite high in, in having this conversation with us because they saw it as well as an opportunity for them. Then it, we defined these processes improvement in actions, um, which was for us from the beginning, one of the very clear things that we wanted. We wanted actionable um, steps out of this whole process. We didn't just want to do it and then just put it on the shelf, but we really wanted to see. So these actions were defined. Um, why it need to be done, who was going to do it, um, and that was quite interesting that we already at this stage were able to allocate these actions all to a, a kind of a small project team or a project responsible to be able to do this. Now we identified quite a huge number of, of items uh, and you'll see this just in a, in, a, in a while, but you obviously they need to prioritize and group these uh, because there may be some of them that are very similar uh, or have a similar way of addressing them and there is obviously all not unlimited capacity available as well in the opcode to do all of these things at the same time. So then we group those and we define it in a plan to, to execute those. Um, all of this, I think, yeah, I mean, if you can go to the next slide, please, is very important for, and I think as, as Rakesh mentioned at the beginning, one of the reasons why this thing was so successful, I think, is that we had the right people around the table. It's very important to have a senior sponsor, that people is aware of it, why we're doing it, and that um, it's clear that we are going to do something with the outcome. I think that's very, very important. And very important as well is that we had a, a team of people in the opcode that understood SAP, they understood the tables, where the information is, because obviously as you define the KPIs, it had to be linked to certain fields and certain tables in SAP. And that helped with quite a lot because these people were very knowledgeable uh, about the software. Um, they were involved in the original setup of it. So they, they were very you know, engaged, I think, and, and understanding very much what was expected and what we need to do and where to find this information. Um, we looked at the whole uh, P2P process. Just the next slide. Um, one of the things that we didn't look at is we actually did not look at master data. And, and the reason for not looking at master data was just that master data is managed in a separate tool. And for the proof of value, we didn't want to include um, additional work around that. But obviously, as we go live, we will uh, include that part of the conversation. So, what was the outcome? Um, on the, on the next slide, you can see clearly what the reality was. Um, on the left-hand side, you have the expectation. You know, you've got the nicely drawn process map and you expect everything to happen like this. And on the right, you could see 6,685 variants uh, that we had. Now, are those too many or are those too few? It's a good question. If you start looking at these, you see that there's a huge amount of rework. And obviously, the thicker the lines, the more rework there is and it's important to understand that and I think that's where the transparency came in and it was very very useful uh, to understand how the things works and, and what it's driving. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to have a, a few minutes, five minutes roughly video where you're going to be able to see in a little bit more detail uh, the process intelligence part of the, of the modules where we actually did the process mining. Yeah, just a quick note, there is quite a loud beep at one point in this, so just be aware of that. A process mining project using the Signavio platform has been completed on the procure-to-pay process. 
data for the following SAP transactions in both the procurement side and the accounts payable side was uploaded into the tool, along with key attribute data such as company name, segment, purchase classification, and PO type. This allowed us to generate key process insights across the P2P process. The dials, indicator, and traffic light elements represent widgets associated with the SAP transaction. For example, here we can find the overall P2P average cycle time, as well as viewing the average by month or by segment or PO type. The thresholds clearly display how different PO types compare to the overall average. Focusing specifically on procurement, we can visualize how the average cycle time for the procurement side of the process has changed over the year. There is a noticeable positive correlation as the year progresses, which doesn't align with the PO volume changes across the year. The process mining tool allows you to focus in on cases that don't meet For example, PO approvals should not take more than two days. However, we found that 2,663 POs took longer than two days to approve. Here we can see that companies with the highest number of POs with a greater than two day approval okay. we also needed a PO type with the delegated procurement flow visibly struggling to approve POs faster. Another thing cases are two levels of creators. There are around 1,000 cases per month where the GR was reported before the invoice was created in the first half of the year. The number of cases then reduced for the second half of the year. By looking at the PO type of these cases, we can see that once again, the delegated procurement flow seems to be the problem. The cycle time implication of this deviation from the happy path cost the flow 33 days and seven hours. Other accounts payable insights that we have generated include delayed payments, where we have identified which vendors are most frequently receiving late payments. Key cycle times, such as invoice scanned to create, invoice created to posted, invoice approval times by company, and invoice posted to payment. Catalog cases have some interesting insights. Overall, the P2P cycle time increases from 55 to 61 days. However, when we look specifically at the procurement cycle time, the cycle time reduces by half from 32 days to 16 days. So what is causing the overall P2P cycle time to increase? By clicking into the investigation, we can find out some more details. Once in the investigation, you can use the navigation bar on the left-hand side to direct you to the desired chapter. The abstract gives us a snippet of the key analysis inside the chapter. 25% of cases use catalog. We know that the procurement side of the catalog process is efficient with a short cycle time here we can see that each step of the accounts payable process is also more efficient for the catalog. So what's causing the delay? The rework rate for the catalog process is high at 88%. The backwards flows and task repetitions associated with this could be delaying the overall process, whilst also requiring more resources to manage. By filtering out the rework catalog cases, we can see the art of the possible. Here, for catalog cases with no rework, the overall P2P average cycle time is just 16 days and 13 hours. By looking at the process discovery diagram, we can identify the most frequent rework areas for catalog case. These are invoice approval, invoice approval back to complete invoice, and complete invoice back to GR. We can identify the companies which are performing catalog cases poorly and those who have efficient catalog P2P processing time. 
This can also be viewed at a plant level. Thank you, Liam. Thank you. Uh, Lafras, be, before you start again, we got a couple of questions coming in. <laughs> and uh, one of them is if you had any struggles to get the data from SAP into the uh, process intelligence tool. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Sure. Um, because we were doing the proof of value, we decided to not create the direct connection between the tool and SAP. Um, but we actually just downloaded the tables from SAP. Um, of course, there's a little bit of work that needs to be done then, and this is where BPMD helped us with, um, because you need to do a bit of uh, data cleanup, and then fairly easily it was uploaded into, into the tool. I, I think one of the important reasons that why we selected the tool is that it's fairly easy to use, um, and you saw all these widgets that was, was shown during the video. Um, with some training, um, we wanted to roll this tool out uh, to as many opcos as possible, and we also didn't want to have a huge amount of training or a, a huge amount of knowledge sitting in the center, but we wanted to empower the local opcos, and, and that was one of the reasons why we selected the tool, because it's easy to train people to use the tool. Um, so yeah, to get the data out, uh, not too complicated. Of course, it's important to make sure that people uh, understand the data that needs to be to be drawn out, and, and you need to have that uh, expertise um, either in-house or, or somebody else to to help you to know which tables in SAP is linked to to which KPIs. Okay, cool, thanks. Sure. So, um, what is the outcome and the benefits? Um, this was quite interesting because we were so driven towards um, having really executable benefits. We were able to, you know, at the end of this, have a look at all these uh, proposals that we were able to identify here and group them in, into different categories. So the first ones that we were looking at was obviously the ones that we can do the easiest um, by doing some limited configuration maybe in the system. The, the second one was about process uh, discipline. Uh, and the third one was the more complex ones that maybe required a lot of enhancements that may have to or that will have to be done uh, in the SAP. And, and I think this was one of the, the nice things that after all of this, uh, we were able to show this to uh, the FD and the CEO and they were really impressed because they could see what needs to be done, where the priorities needs to be. And if you then want to shuffle some of these ones around, you can still do that. The other thing that was also a very good outcome um, of this is that we were able to compare the different business users and business units in the company. Um, and if you drill down into different business units, you can actually compare it by plan. So you can start comparing within the OPCO as to, before you've even defined the most ideal process, which OPCOs or which units and plans within a unit are performing things differently. And you can start just having that conversation. Uh, with people and I think that was going back to the transparency that the tool brought um, It already helped that we could compare two plants and, and I remember when we did the the presentation to the management team uh, one of the directors were quite um, Kind of a little bit shocked when, when he saw the outcome of this because there was quite big variances just in the business unit that he was uh, Responsible for and and again it took out that kind of emotion on the conversation that you have but these are just the facts, and, and then we can go and see, you know, why somebody is performing in a certain way. And I think that is a very, very powerful part of the tool that you can do these internal corporations. And then, of course, eventually we would like to have a standard, and we will work towards the standard. And, and that was one of the reasons why we selected the tool because we are so federated, so uh, with the different ERP systems, so it's not so easy to just define a, a standard and say everybody needs to behave on it because there are obviously some restrictions that you have to take into account in an ERP system. And then here you can very easily start comparing uh, the, the areas next to each other. Um, the other thing that was quite interesting is when we completed the proof of, of value, we had some, some feedback from uh, the teams. Um, and the I think the overall outcome was very positive. Uh, people were impressed with what, what was done in, in a six week period. Um, they were, 
very happy to be able to show to people that here is the problems. You know, because you have these conversations always where somebody says, ah, because you don't do the GR, we have a problem. But here you can just clearly see, and you can actually identify if you want to even the people that is not doing the the, the, the activities timely and that is creating the problem. So it just brings that additional level of, a level of transparency and it, and it also brought out those things that we were not expecting. So we expected to have some issues in certain areas that everybody was aware of. But then, as you saw from the video, um, the, the, the improvement that was implemented in the procurement side with catalogs resulted in a, a big issue on the accounts payable side. Um, and of course, there was never really this conversation between the two teams um, looking at the same problem from both ends. Um, it, it brought that conversation to a completely different level. And I think that was very important because immediately that specific issue was identified even during the, the workshop close and people knew exactly what needed to be done to, to fix it. Um, and that issue has been around for yeah more than a year. So I think that was very, very, very useful for us to have these, these conversations. Some of the complexities, of course, was you had to have the right fields defined. And, and I think that's very important because we already saw that um, when we identified the KPIs, we had to get the definitions correct because if everybody do not have the same understanding of what you want to measure, then we may be looking uh, at different uh, decision points uh, and that may make the, the process a bit more complicated. Um, right, so as I mentioned before, um, and if, if you saw also during in the video, one of the issues that we were having was with delegated procurement. So we then went to the uh, the next part of of the tool, the process manager, because in process manager you can do actually do some simulations, and and this helped us quite a lot. So if you look at the process that we had in, in delegate procurement, there was kind of three big problems um, that we had. One of the issues, there was a huge amount of rework that had to be done downstream. There was a lot of manual tasks that had to be carried out. There was about 143 people involved in this process across the company. And then, of course, at the end, it created quite some issues with three-way match failures that we had. So in the tool, we were able to simulate what would happen if we change this. And I think that's very, very powerful because it allows you to understand what will happen if you change because sometimes you know you fix the thing and i think that's the experience that we had we, we fixed the procurement part of the process by integrating or implementing catalogs but then the other side of the process created some issues uh, and we were not aware of it so for this specific process we we thought about what is the best way of doing it uh, and we came up with the idea to create a standardized form for people to create or fill in to be able to create the purchase order and then we will set up an automation uh, or a bot to take this information and then actually create the PO. So I think that the, the nice outcome of, of the of the conversation you can see on the, on the right hand side, we this whole or well, this one single step improvement on on the whole process actually resulted in a in a process cost saving of about 42 percent and an enhanced efficiency of about 74 percent, which I think is quite important. If this is only one step and one thing that we did, um, there's obviously a lot of other opportunities then around. And that's why it's very, very nice and I think useful to be able to simulate these processes because then you can see where the problems is going to come and where you need to be aware of. And then, you, of course, you have also the, the defined process that you can measure against and to see where, how your performance is actually tracking against what you originally planned. Uh, so, what is the next step for us? Uh, the next steps for us is obviously with uh, the current situation that we had, that we have with with COVID-19. It has quite a big impact on on our business in in the different countries in Europe. Uh, some companies are are more hit than others. Unfortunately, the the group of companies where we wanted to do the initial rollout um, has been hit. The, the hardest. So we're currently a little bit in the hold pattern to see how things will be developing over the next couple of months uh, and then decide how to, to roll this out further. But here you see the plan that we have and I think that the beauty of this is we're a federated company. Um, we've never really done this in such a coordinated fashion 
but even by being such a federated company and, and the fact that the tool is, is quite flexible, it allows you to roll these things out, I think, in, in quite a, a, a fast time frame if you have um, definitely the, the committed support from, from the, the senior management from our FD as I mentioned. Um, when we did the presentation to the, uh, the OPCO CEO, um, halfway through the presentation, he already said he would like to do it for another process because he believes there's more issues in that process. So I think that's the important part that people can really see tangibly how you could go about changing things um, without having a huge amount of people around. But we would like to, you know, empower each OPCO to do this by themselves in, in the best possible way by having a very small central group to, to help to guide people around and, and, and develop and enhance these things by themselves. Nafas, so that is our just one more question coming in. This is obviously talking about the timelines going forward, uh, hopefully when the corona crisis is behind us or at least a little bit less on the forefront. Can, can you tell us a little bit about the timelines that you went through? How long did it take to go through the process that you have described in this presentation? Sure. Um, we took all in all from the day that we started, and we actually started on, on the 8th of January, um, which may be a bit of a crazy time to start with year end and, and all of this. But uh, we took about six weeks until we had the, the final presentation to the, uh, the CEO and the management board. So I, I think if you're focused and it's clear what you want and, and you have the right amount, the, the right people around the table in the beginning, um, this can be done yeah, quite fast because it's it's not a continuous involvement of everybody over the six six weeks, and I think that's also what makes it more digestible. Uh, you have a, a group of people involved in the beginning, and you can split everybody's involvement around it. But yeah, it took us about six weeks. Now, okay. what we will do now is obviously we need to spend uh, some additional days to to connect. Um, the, the software directly to SAP so that we can start doing more of continuous monitoring. Uh, and also we've had some conversations with our internal audit team uh, and they were also quite excited about this because obviously what this would help us to do as well is that we can become more proactive in actually monitoring our controls and identifying the issues so that you, know, you, you become more proactively monitoring the issues rather than to do uh, reactive controls. In, in a lot of instances. So, um, yeah, we need to spend a, a few more days around this. Cool. Does that Thanks. answer the question? Or no? Yes. So, yeah, that was our journey. Um, I think the, 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 the nice thing about this is that people were a little bit skeptical about this, um, but the, the outcome showed that there is um, tremendous opportunity by bringing this in a, in a very structured way to people to, to consume and understand. And, and I think that's really very, very powerful that um, once you've set it up, OPCOs can then progress at their own, at their own pace, um, you know, as they have availability of people. Because obviously, once you've identified what needs to be done, it still needs to be done. And, that, and that's quite a big part of it. But it, it helps you to monitor then uh, this process in, in a very, very structured way. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. There, there, there's a couple of questions coming in about um, how the coronavirus has impacted uh, a CRH and how your standard processes have to be adjusted, changed, uh, contingency plans, uh, if they're impacted. Can, can you elaborate a little bit on that as well? Um, obviously, we're in the buildings industry and in, in some countries uh, where we had some quite severe lockdowns, it, it had a tremendous impact on, on our business. Um, and a lot of people were, were put on furlough, um, unfortunately, for, for some time. Some other companies or countries, the, the restrictions were not so severe. Uh, like, for instance, in the Netherlands, um, we, we didn't have such a big impact. Um, but obviously, I think importantly is that the, the benefit of having this tool has shown because obviously why did we do this we wanted to show where we can improve and where we can do things do things differently and do it better um, and, and the payback is there it, it shows that we can do things better um, and I am 100% sure that we will restart the process pretty pretty soon um, uh, 
um, irrespective. And, and I think even with, with COVID around now, there's going to be much more focus on, on how we can be more cost effective and efficient in, in the way we do things. And, and this tool helps you to, to identify those things. So I think if, if you are looking for a way to, I mean, to, to show how we can do things differently and better, this is definitely the way to go. Cool. And is, is there any feedback from the cluster of these? Oh, the battery's running low there. <laughs> from the cluster of these that, 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 that you would like to mention specifically on <clears throat> what they have said going forward when they want to start up these um, uh, investigations or, or any coloring around that? Yeah, I, I think. Um, I mean, we've we've got four clusters in Europe, um, and uh, because of the different regulations in different com com countries, these clusters have been uh, differently affected. Um, so there's quite some some appetite around this. Again, as we were quite a, a decentralized company and very federated, you know, there was quite a lot of skepticism in the in the beginning. But once we've shown this to to the cluster of these. Um, they were really interested into in in this, um, and uh, it's again. I I think you also just need to be careful that, yeah. I mean, we have 36 different ERPs in in Europe alone, just in our division. So it's quite. Uh, I mean, there's some work to set these things up, um, and that's why it becomes important, you know, to to get the sizing right. And um, and I think they, yeah, they're all excited. They want to start sooner than later. <laughs> Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> we have one more question, which I'm not sure I fully understand, but I think it has more to do with the um, onboarding on your P2P uh, systems. Uh, and it speaks about that they have a P2P system that works well in uh, once, you, once you're in and once you're approved, <clears throat> but it's a nightmare to get into. And uh, I guess the question is how, how are your people working with your P2P systems and is it easy to get on those systems? Not sure if it's related to cross intelligence. Sure. Um, obviously, I mean, if you have different systems, then you need to get the data to flow from one system to another. So if you are able to map those, you can actually identify where the bottleneck is. Um, if you say it's difficult to get onto those systems, we don't have one standard um, P2P system. We have you know, as I say, different ERPs and, and even um, in just for SAP, I think we have nine different versions of SAP. So all, all things are, are being done slightly different in, in a lot of opcos. Um, but w what the tool does, it, it helps you to, st to standardize some things. So I think it may help you to, to identify exactly where the bottlenecks are or, or why is there a problem for people to get um, onto the tool. I don't know if that answers the question. Uh, I hope it does. And otherwise, please feel free to uh, to contact us, the person who asked that question. Um, I think we went through um, all of the questions here. Um, I'd really like to thank you, uh, you both, uh, but especially you, of course, Lacrosse, for uh, being so transparent and uh, taking us through this whole transformation project. Um, I think it was very, educational and helpful for a lot of people. Um, if anybody on the on the call, any of the attendees wants to contact uh, us, please contact your <coughs> regular people within uh, Signavio or use the info uh, email address. Um, Lefras, Rakesh, any last words before we uh, close off the webinar? Yeah, no, I think that was very good. Thanks, Lefras. Thanks, Olaf, for moderating it. That's it for me. Thank you. Okay, thanks everybody. Have a great day. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye.